All right, so uh, I'm joined here now by uh, Kevin uh, Kevin Walsh, who is an uh, author of Forgotten New York and Forgotten Queens, a webmaster of the, uh, the the great website Forgotten New York and future Jeopardy champion. I'm pretty sure. When well, you, uh, you're mouth to God's ear. <laughs> <laughs> someday, someday you're going to get on the show, Kevin. I know it. I know it. Is 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 that woman that's been winning so much? Is she still there? No, she's gone. She she she, she, she got beaten. Yeah, she got beaten by an Irishman, who uh, uh, who lasted one day. Well, that's so, what uh, happened with uh, Ken Jennings. He he mm-hmm. was beaten by a woman, and and she she lost the next day. Yeah, it's a uh, you know it's all that anticipation of going up against someone who's uh, who's that. now you you you've tried out for it a couple of times now. I've been following you on Facebook. Yeah, and, I've qualified uh, four times and they don't call me. Okay, well, well, we'll uh, we'll, we'll 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 get a write-in campaign uh, <laughs> going going for you. So you know, there's a lot of talk about the 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 upcoming uh, walking tour that you're going to be leading through through Richmond Hill, and uh, that's going to be on. Uh, June Saturday, June twenty eighth, starting at twelve noon. Everyone's going to meet at one hundred twenty first Street and Jamaica Avenue, and uh, it's going to it's going to end at Woodhaven Boulevard and Park Lane South at about three thirty p.m. So it's a it's a long walk. Uh, what 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 kind of things are people going to see along the way? I know you've been scouting out uh, Richmond Hill. What uh, what interesting things are people going to expect to see? Well, without giving away the whole tour, because you know I like people to be surprised. Uh, we're going to see several uh, historic structures that are clustered around the intersections of uh, Jamaica Avenue, uh, Hillside Avenue, and uh, Lefferts Boulevard, such as the Church of the Resurrection, which we're going to take a, uh, which we've been given uh, leave to uh, actually inspect the interior. We're going to see the mm. inside of that. Inside of that, we're also going to see several. Uh, you know things you don't see in the guidebooks, like uh, very some very very old store signage, and uh, there's painted ads on buildings for business, businesses that have left there years and or decades ago. Uh, we're going to see uh, remnants of the uh, Long Island Railroad connection to the Pennsylvania Railroad. Uh, we're going to see uh, as we go along the tour, we're going to see some beautiful houses in Richmond Hill. That's what the area is known for. There's a Victorian uh, uh, sort of, it was developed by Alban Mann uh, back in the late 1800s and early 1900s, and there are several uh, uh, beautiful homes, uh, eclectic houses with uh, Queen Anne style and Victorian architecture left over from those days. I tell you, you know, we we drive we drive through uh, Richmond Hill uh, frequently, and especially especially on the northern side of Jamaica Avenue, up up towards Park Lane South and Forest Park, and we are floored by some of the houses that we that we see. And and, and I and I know, you know, there's a lot of a lot of people that want to see, you know, a lot of these houses preserved. Um, are 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 a lot, any of these houses in danger? I mean, do they they seem like they're under good care? Unfortunately, Richmond Hill is not a landmark neighborhood. Uh, mm. if you, if the way to tell a landmark neighborhood is if you walk along the street, you'll see the uh, street signs are in maroon and white. Uh, but in Richmond Hill, it's plain old green and white, which means that the area has not been landmarked, which means that developers can come in. If anybody wants to sell these homes, they can come in, buy the house, buy the plot, and build whatever they want on them. Uh, that's happened in some cases, but fortunately, uh, Richmond Hill has been able to, so far, uh, preserve a lot of these uh, beautiful homes in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Well, I'm I'm looking I'm looking forward to the uh, to, to the tour, and I'm looking I'm looking forward to finally meeting you. You know, uh, going back, I had read I had read once that uh, when you started your website, uh, that there were a couple other websites that had uh, inspired you. Um, uh, Frank Jump, uh, his fading ad side uh, for for one, um, right. and, and yet it was it was your site that actually was an inspiration for me, and I'm sure you inspired many other people uh, a- along the way to to take a look and, and see what they see around them and and share and put it up on on the web. But maybe you know. So I want to thank you for that first of all. Um, well, you know, I'm maybe, very proud of that. But a lot of people have since uh, I, I, in my opinion. Have since uh, surpassed what I'm doing. There's the the scouting New York uh, fellow. Mm. He's uh, he can get access to a lot of the places because he works in the industry and he can actually get pictures from inside these buildings that I can't. And mm. there's the uh, Bowery Boys uh, guys that do a, po- a podcast every week and 
they have daily posts and uh you know it's all become a a very uh, interesting uh, community of uh, new york city type bloggers and they do all this uh, amazing stuff and i'm i was happy to be there at the forefront and if anybody got any inspiration from me uh well that's that's very nice ah, that that that's great so so take it take us back when you when you started uh i mean what what was uh you know what was your inspiration those first days what was uh you know when you when you put it up on the web did you get an immediate reaction from people uh i was lucky enough to get to get the attention of the new york times right away mm-hmm. uh when i when i uh, began the site on march 26 1999 i got a call from uh, david kirby of the times just a couple of weeks later uh and uh he wanted to talk about the website so i gave you know i we i i talked to him over the phone and it was a uh, an article in the times uh, next sunday they used to have a f uh, have a have a like a new york city website column uh on their new york metro sunday edition and that was the days when the times had a new york metro edition uh they got rid of that since uh mm-hmm. but that really boosted my traffic and uh you know gradually i i got the attention of other news outlets i I've, I've appeared in all the uh, all the dailies and uh most of the weeklies and uh you know it's it's very good to get all that attention and, uh, that's great and then and then you made the 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 move over uh, and and came out with the book forgotten new york which well i was very um, very fortunate because uh in uh 2003 i think it was i got a an email or a call out of the blue from a fellow at uh harper collins named matthew benjamin and he asked me uh, if I'd like to do a book. Now, that's not usually the way it's done. You have <laughs> yeah. to do a, a dog and pony show. With uh, you have to you have to uh, send your manuscript around to several different publishers, most of which will turn you down at first. But uh, this was very different. They wanted me to write for them, which was uh, which was uh, very uh, uh, which was very fortunate. Mm. And uh, you know, I, I researched the book, took all the pictures, and. Uh, uh, wrote all the content. Took about two years to finish off the book, and uh, it was released in September 2006. And it's uh, had six editions now. It's still selling. Never, never burned up the uh, New York Times bestseller list, but it's been a consistent seller, and it's very good. And listen, I've, I've seen it uh, in my travels uh, when I've been on the road. I've seen it in different bookstores. I've seen it in different cities. I, I, I was holding a copy of it in Chicago. Um, it was, you know, I've seen it, I've seen it around and, uh, when I've, uh, I, I have two copies myself, I bought one and then I misplaced it, couldn't find oh. it and then, and then picked up another one. And then finally I, I found it again in the basement. Um, the, uh, the thing I really love about it, it it's a, it's a, it's a dense book. It's in other words, it, it's, 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 there's a lot of information in it. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of a lot of fun to read. And you said it took two years to put together, and that must have been a, a, a lot of work in two years because it's it's not a skimpy book. Well, there, I had a little time then as now. Uh, right now, I'm looking for work, and in 2005, I was between jobs as well. So that gave me a lot of time to mm-hmm. to sit down and do the whole thing. So now, recently, you you, you focused on uh, on Queens, and you came out with the uh, the, the forgotten the forgotten Queens. Uh, that was uh yeah that was a fortuitous occurrence because uh a couple of years ago I joined forces with the Greater Story Historical Society and uh it was co-written with by me and by them mm-hmm. uh using uh photos from their archives. Uh, right. A lot of this stuff was just uh, gathering dust in the back room and uh we took it out, we scanned it and we we got rid of we cleaned up the scans and we got rid of all the all the uh impurities shall we say and all the mm-hmm. uh all the odd marks in the pictures and we made them publishable and we uh we got arcadia to put it out for us that's a, again another another beautiful book to 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 look through uh lots of uh lot, lots of lots of old pictures and that's what people people really love uh love seeing that i know we had uh, uh jason antos uh had had come over to nearest tavern and had given a, a a presentation of Queens then and now, <clears throat> and hey, he's like the king people, of Arcadia. He's like he has like six or yeah. seven books. <laughs> no, he's, he had a bunch. He's got, he's got all the Mets. He's got a White Stone flushing, and he came out and he gave a great, uh, great, great presentation. And you know, people people love seeing the, the old pictures, and, and they love seeing the the changes. 
you know, it, 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 for some reason, it, 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 you know, as human beings, we, we really like seeing the change that have taken place over either our lifetime or, or, or you know, slightly before. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> I, don't, I'm, I myself, I love it as well, but I just don't understand why we uh, enjoy seeing the changes. Well, I wish time travel were possible, but with the laws mm. of physics the way they are, it's impossible. But photographs are the next best thing. Absolutely, for going, uh, you know, for going back. For, for I guess for people age, I guess there's a sense of uh, of nostalgia, you know, looking back. Now, where did you grow up in Queens? Oh, I did not grow up in Queens. Okay. I grew up in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. I was there uh, from birth to age 35, and then uh, at age uh, 35, 34, I, I I I found myself with a job in Port Washington, Long Island. So uh, I thought it would be best since I don't drive at all. I thought it would be best mm-hmm. instead of taking three trains. To go to work in three trains home, I would better move closer, uh, closer to Port Washington. So I, mm-hmm. I moved to Flushing in 1993, and uh, then to Little Neck in uh, 2007. Oh, hi. So now, do you do you think the fact that you don't drive uh, has, has something to do with uh, really helping you out as a, as a street historian, as it were? I mean, that's you, correct you're... because I have to walk everywhere I go, and mm-hmm. I used to do a lot more bicycling than I do now, and. Uh, you know, and I would bicycle all over Brooklyn in the 70s and 80s and 90s. I would notice things and file them in the back of my head. And then when I started to do Forgotten New York, uh, when the Internet came along, uh, I, I visited these places and got pictures of them. And I, I, uh, this was back in the days when I was using uh, little 24-shot uh, 24, uh, 24 rolls of film. So uh, I, have a, mm. I have all those pictures stored in my closet. Now I can take uh, 300, 500 pictures if I want to on, on one walk if I need to. Sure. But, uh, Back then, I was limited to uh, 24 or 48 if I uh, if I brought two rolls, so I had to be very judicious judicious in the one I what I was taking pictures of. So uh, nowadays, I can just uh, take take just everything I want and just uh, publish a few of them. Yeah, just keep just keep shooting. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, I want to I want to thank you for uh, for for taking the time to, to speak to me today, and we'll uh, we're looking forward to seeing you on the uh, on the 28th in Richmond Hill. 28th, we're going to meet at the 121st Street Station on Jamaica Avenue, and uh, uh, it should take uh, it should take about three hours. We're gonna we're gonna actually go into two places. We're gonna go into the Church of the Resurrection, and there's another church on 96th Street that uh, I'm gonna save that for a surprise. Anybody. Uh, there's uh, there's a little surprise at that church. I'm going to reveal it when we go on the tour. All right. Looking forward to it. All right. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you.